ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. We've got beef, President Putin. President Zelensky. A local congressman joins the chorus of Democrats calling on President Biden to step aside after some slip-ups during a press conference. <laughs> Drivers doing donuts. Why police can't agree on whose jurisdiction this is. And it's hurting first-time home buyers. It's hurting renters. Fighting back against corporate investors buying San Diego's housing inventory. It's definitely something I dreamed of as a kid, so, you know, it's school has come true. We hear from young Padre star Jackson Merrill about his first trip to the All-Star Game. It's 6 a.m. on Friday, July 12th, and you're up with CBS 8. Hey, thank you so much for joining us 6 a.m. on this Friday. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Evan Ronnie. We want to get started with a look at the forecast, a cooling forecast. I, I can feel when I stepped out the door this morning. It was very nice. Yeah, we finally are noticing a change that is coming in the form of cooler temperatures, but it's also coming along with some monsoonal moisture. And that means that while we're trading maybe one heat for something else, you know, it's not all going to stay perfect and fine out there. We do have that chance of a few showers out there, uh, especially as we move off toward the mountains and deserts in the form of monsoonal moisture for our Saturday and Sunday. In the meantime, this afternoon, it's still a pretty comfortable day. There's some fog close to the coast and inland, 74 for the coastal communities, 87 on average inland. That's cooling down from the 90s that we were in earlier this week. No longer is there a chance of triple digits for the mountains. We are looking at 93 and getting cooler as the weekend and early next week comes around 112 on on average for the deserts. And again, just watch out for a bit of fog as we start off the morning. That'll clear over the next several hours. Eric. Well, this morning, San Diego Congressman Scott Peters is among Democrats now calling on President Biden to drop out of the race for the White House. As CBS's Jared Hill reports, this comes after a high stakes news conference where the president flubbed some names. I'm determined on running. In a rare solo news conference, an energetic President Joe Biden defied calls to drop out of the 2024 race. I've got to finish this job. The president faced tough questions for an hour as he tried to tamp down concerns over his age and fitness for office. I've taken three significant and intense neurological exams. Can you name me somebody who's got more major piece of legislation passed in three and a half years? But last night, more House Democrats publicly called on the president to step aside. In the next 96 hours, perhaps, is the moment to set aside the poetry, the loyalty, and the love, and ask yourself a hard question, mm -hmm. which is, are you sure he's going to win? The gaffe-prone president did make a few missteps yesterday. First, flubbing his introduction of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky at a NATO event. President Putin. <laughs> President Zelensky. And later, while referring to his running mate, Vice President Kamala Harris. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. Former President Donald Trump mocked the gaffe on social media, writing Biden, quote, has Trump derangement syndrome. Jared Hill, CBS News. In a statement, San Diego Congressman Scott Peters says that while the nation owes an enormous debt of gratitude to President Biden, quote, it's now clear, however, that the president's record of accomplishments will not translate into similar success in his reelection campaign. The stakes are high and we are on a losing course. My conscience requires me to speak up and put loyalty to the country and to democracy ahead of my great affection for and loyalty to the president and those around him. Peters continues, I hope all Democrats will join me in putting the country first, preserving the progress of the past four years, and solidifying Joe Biden's legacy as one of the greatest leaders of our time by defeating Donald Trump, end quote. Here locally in just a couple of hours, people are expected to gather at a Poway Park for a community rally. They'll be speaking out against the proposal of a placement of a sexually violent predator in their community. CBS 8's Chris Grow is live at Garden Row Park, and that's where this rally is going to be taking place, Chris? And it's about two miles away from uh, Sycamore Canyon Road, which is the proposed rehoming area for 67-year-old Merle Wakefield, a sexually violent predator, and residents here are already speaking out against that. It's scary that he can go past Garden Road Elementary. My son rides his bike all the time there. We walk our dog. Our, my children are there. 
Yeah, and and even more so b beyond the park and the school that is two miles away, which, by the way, again, is within that distance limitation that is placed on the placement of sexually violent predators. But on that property, there's a family of five with three small kids. They rent a, a piece of property there, and there's another one that's on the way. Uh, now, as for Wakefield's extensive history here, it goes back to 1981 and 1990. More than 20 arrests and 10 convictions, including rape as well as committing lewd acts with a minor under 14. This is not the first time that his placement has come under scrutiny. In fact, he was supposed to be placed at a home in Mount Helix back in 2021, but that was scrapped by a judge. Now, this time, again, here in a remote, more of a more remote area here in uh, Poway, not only is there that home there that's on the property with the family, but there's also some stables, some horse stables, including one that specializes in giving rides to disabled children. Now, speaking of other communities, there's a Rancho Bernardo resident, Jeff Grace, who wants to help lead the charge to keep uh, Wakefield out of Poway. He actually led the charge keeping another sexually violent predator out of his community a few years ago. Here's what he had to say. They're shocked. They're devastated. They don't know where to look. We want droves. We want volume um, so that that stack is this high so the judge can see, wow, this community is really concerned. Now, this rally will be happening at 10 a.m., but the key date here is going to be August 9th. That's when a judge will decide Wakefield's placement. The community has until July 22nd to submit public comment. Eric and Evan. All right, Chris, something we'll stay on top of. Also today, the man accused of entering a home in the college area and going into a woman's bedroom is expected to appear in court. Police say 22-year-old Dylan Baldwin Acuna forced his way into a home on Mary Lane Drive on Wednesday morning. They say he was in a 19-year-old's bedroom when she woke up. Police say he ran out of the house at that time but lingered on the property, peeping through a window. Acuna is being held on $50,000 bail. This morning, nurses at Rady Children's Hospital now have a date set for a strike. They will hit the picket line on July 22nd. It will last 48 hours. Their union has been negotiating with the hospital for a new three-year contract. Officials at Rady Children's say they have plans in place to be ready to provide care to patients. And today, unionized workers at the convention center returned to the bargaining table ahead of a possible strike. All this just before Comic-Con. Employees voted to authorize a strike if they can't get a new contract. The president of Unite Here Local 30, the union representing the workers, says they want to raise better benefits and improved working conditions. It's not clear when they could go on strike, but Comic-Con begins on July 25th. In fact, there's a lot happening now that we're in mid-July to the end of the year. All eyes on the forecast. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we have some uh, decent weather and we don't have too many of these uh, extreme heat events that we've had here the past few weeks. And now we're watching as there's a chance of some showers in the forecast for the weekend. So we are kind of trading one for another. What we're watching for is that things are not expected to be all that dramatic for us. I mean, generally, we're headed into a very comfortable, very mild weekend. There might be a small rise in humidity and mid-level clouds and then a few showers popping up over the mountains. But all we're dealing with this morning is a bit of fog out there. Temperatures are going to be cooling day to day, which allows us to return to a pretty standard trend of afternoon high temperatures very close to normal Kearney Mesa right now at a mile and a half of visibility you can see those clouds are stretching pretty far off to the east this uh, certain model because we still have trouble with low clouds ahead of sunrise or before we get much of that light coming through shows that there could be a good portion of the county that's actually covered in that cloud layer as we speak. We're watching as the excessive heat warning that was previously set to expire today at 9 p.m. has now been extended through tomorrow at 9 p.m. This pertains exclusively to our deserts, so along the coast, inland, and across the mountains, no heat-related alerts in play. It is just the desert. So Borrego Springs, Ocotillo Wells are the main spots that we're concerned about across the west. Western U.S., a lot of these heat related alerts are set to expire by tomorrow night. Only a few hang on through Sunday, and then we'll watch as these start to shift east. They already have. That's the orange here on the screen that extends through portions of Colorado, through uh, eastern Montana. Wouldn't be surprised if it moved into the Dakotas either. Uh, looking at your temperatures out the door right now, 58 in Ramona, 71 in Julian right now, 83 in Borrego Springs. Along the coastline, we're mostly in the mid-60s at 65 in Carlsbad, 64 in Del Mar and 67 in downtown San Diego. So pretty mild overall for now. By the time we get to the afternoon, 
our high temperatures inland are going to be in the upper 80s or so this afternoon. We've left the 90s behind, cooling down to the mid 80s for Saturday and Sunday and staying in about that range of mid 80s all the way through next week. Let's take a look at how traffic is shaping up this morning at 609 right now and so far drive times out the door are looking pretty good on the 163 northbound, the 8 westbound and from the Coronado Bridge downtown to Coronado slowing down just a bit to 42 miles per hour. That's not bad. It's still only a three minute commute across the bridge there. Let's take a look at your border wait times as you head out the door as well. San Ysidro Port of Entry is going to be about an hour and a half getting across. Otay Mesa Port of Entry is going to take you about an hour in total. Remember our website, cbs8.com slash traffic can help you out with that morning commute. Eric. Still ahead here, a huge data breach impacts practically all AT&T cell customers. Plus, why former President Donald Trump says his hush money conviction should be thrown out. And a warning against so-called heat tourism. If you can't watch CBS 8 Mornings live, watch us on your own time on CBS 8 Plus. Add our app today to your Roku, Fire TV, and now Apple TV, and watch us on your schedule. San Diego County Toyota Dealers. Own the road like never before. The new Toyota Tacoma is here. Now, get an incredible $339 a month lease on a new 4x4 Tacoma. We make it easy. Toyota, let's go places. The experienced technicians at Rescue Rooter are ready to solve all of your drain problems. Take advantage of our 99 or it's free mainline drain clearing special. If we can't clear it, you don't pay for it. Call 866-482-2990 to schedule your appointment. Now more than ever, our homes are the central focus of our lives. That's why there's no better time to reimagine your living space through a new window project with Window World. Hey everybody, I'm Gene Bryan, owner of Window World. Whether you want to increase the value of your property, prepare for an addition to your family, or simply improve the beauty of your home, you can count on the award-winning professionals at Window World. With Window World's flexible financing options and energy-efficient products can help save on energy bills, you can rest assured that upgrading your home's windows is within reach. Forget big box stores and inexperienced installers where results can be costly and time consuming. Trust locally owned Window World. Our windows are perfectly positioned at the intersection of quality, beauty, and affordability. Right now, save 10% off up to $1,000 on your home remodeling project and receive 24 months zero interest financing. So call or visit us online now to set your complimentary no obligation consultation. So go ahead, reimagine your living space. I don't think anything compares to the experience that you get here at Tough Shed. Their product speaks for itself. It's so high quality. Everything just looks so sturdy and durable. Jump on the Tough Shed online design tool, play around with it, go to a showroom. I promise you won't be disappointed. Right now, if you purchase a new shed or garage from Tough Shed, we'll paint it for free. The experienced technicians at Rescue Rooter are ready to solve all of your drain problems. Take advantage of our 99 or it's free mainline drain clearing special. If we can't clear it, you don't pay for it. Call 866-482-2990 to schedule your appointment. CBS 8's Weather Impact Forecast is sponsored by SDCCU. You. Welcome back here at 613. This just in here, AT&T announcing the call and text message records of tens of millions of cell phone customers were exposed in a massive data breach. The company says the compromised data includes the telephone numbers of nearly all of its cellular customers and the customers of mobile virtual network operators on its network have been uh, happened between May 1st of 2022 and October 31st of 2022. The breach also includes AT&T landline customers who interacted with those cell phone numbers. Customers' names were not exposed. AT&T says it will notify current and former customers who are impacted. This morning, the search continues for two missing children from Sacramento. Police think their father, Cameron Lee, took four-year-old Athena and three-year-old Mateo after their mother was found dead on July 8th. 
The California Highway Patrol put out an endangered missing advisory in seven California counties, including San Diego. The car their father is believed to be driving, a 2023 Honda Pilot, was seen in Mexico earlier this week. It's really frustrating because that's what we thought from the beginning, that he was probably headed to Mexico. Because the car crossed into Mexico, an Amber Alert cannot be issued. Right now, former President Donald Trump is seeking to have his hush money conviction overturned. His attorney says the recent Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity proves that some of the evidence and testimony used in the trial should have been withheld from the jury because they were related to protected official acts. Back in May, Trump was convicted of 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. And today, the armorer for the movie Rust will be called to testify in actor Alec Baldwin's involuntary manslaughter trial. But her attorney says that she plans to plead the fifth. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed is serving an 18-month sentence after being found guilty of involuntary manslaughter for that same crime, the 2021 fatal shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. In Baldwin's case, prosecutors are trying to prove that he was acting negligently while holding a prop gun on set. And some sad news here. Actress Shelley Duvall has died. She was one of the best known actresses of the 1970s and early 1980s, specifically for her role in The Shining with co-star Jack Nicholson. She also starred alongside Robin Williams in the comedy Popeye and was a mainstay in Robin, Robert Altman's films. Her partner says Duvall died in her sleep. She had been bedridden for complications due to diabetes. Shelley Duvall was 75 years old. Officials in our local deserts are telling potential visitors just to stay away. They say the extreme heat is dangerous, and they're advising people not to visit those areas anytime soon. Officials with the Anza Borrego Desert State Park have been posting warnings about the dangerous conditions on their social media pages. They've also posted signs on the trails. Officials say they don't see many visitors during the summer months, but they do get heat tourists. Those are people who seek out these hot temperatures. Borrego Springs reached upwards of 120 degrees earlier this week, which can be deadly. Hiking in temperatures exceeding 100 degrees Fahrenheit is extremely dangerous and can lead to potentially life-threatening situations. So heat exhaustion, heat illness can set in before you're even experiencing symptoms. Officials say anyone who chooses to visit the desert despite the warnings should pack plenty of water, wear light-colored, loose-fitting clothing. There are so many other uh, places you can be a tourist <laughs> yeah. at. A lot so many more options. fun and, and one thing cooler that she places. said that is especially pertinent is that those heat-related illnesses set in before yeah. you notice them. Absolutely. So that's always what happens. It's is not that worth people, the risk. Exactly. It just sneaks up on you uh, while you're out there in the desert. So that's why so many are opting for the alternative, which is the coastline. Now, uh, coastline comes along with its own set of issues, and that is mainly fog as we start off the morning. But those clouds are only going to last through the morning hours. By the afternoon, those clouds are set to break apart, give us more sunshine. We're hanging on to some low clouds and mid-level clouds from Otai Mountain. We're going to have the influx of clouds, the influx of humidity out there as we start to see some monsoonal moisture drift into the region. That could ultimately trigger a few showers or thunderstorms over the mountains but doesn't come along with any particular risk. That's only about a 20% chance going into the weekend. Uh, along the coastline, partly cloudy skies, temperatures in the mid and upper 70s by this afternoon. When we talk about that monsoonal moisture again, dominant forecast shows that it's cloud cover, right? That's all that we're seeing is clear skies, clouds move in, and then you see these small little specks of green in the forecast for early Saturday, and then again for Sunday, mainly over our mountaintops. And those are what we're calling pop-up showers. Could still be, you know, a quick downpour of rain at times, but generally these are staying away from the coast, but have the potential to drift in to maybe the valleys. Uh, this is going to be a trend for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday mainly, and it will come along, like I said, with the rise in humidity. So you might feel a bit muggy out there over the course of the weekend. High temperatures look like this along the coastline, 70s, 80s as you make your way east, 85 for Poway this afternoon. Miramar and La Mesa, that cool down is felt. 80 degrees is what they're expecting this afternoon. 87 for El Cajon. Campos dropping from the triple digits down to 98 degrees, still hot. 93 for Julian and 160 for Borrego Springs on that afternoon high. Coastline has no change in the forecast. Mid 70 degree temperatures all the way through the end of next week. Partly cloudy skies, meaning in the morning, the AM clouds that we see could stick to the ground, 
fog development is always possible in that mix. Inland, we'll be watching as temperatures are going to finally peak in the mid 80s as opposed to the 90s and mid 90s. So we have finally started to see those temperatures fall and it looks like they will stay in that cooler range or at least closer to normal range for the mountains and deserts a final day with the weather impact alert and then we'll see those temperatures across both the mountains and deserts start to fall as we get into the weekend and next week back to the 80s in some cases for the mountains as opposed to triple digit heat that we saw toward yesterday and days past deserts are going to drop from about 119 and near 120 all the way down to 109 by tomorrow afternoon staying in that pretty similar range all the way through next week.